Joining us now is Mr. Sergei Stokin, political uh, commentator and analyst from uh, Russia. Mr. Stokin, can you tell us what's happened in the last 24 to 36 hours? It's been absolute mayhem and total confusion. What happened? Well, after, after a day of madness, uh, this uh, morning we woke up to, to, to new sunny reality, which had a clear sign that uh, all the controversy of yesterday, which made a lot of people half mad, uh, <laughs> including buying, trying to buy tickets and to flee Russia. So the, this is the whole story is over. Uh, luckily, there's a happy end in the whole story of this uh, Evgeny Prigozhin so-called coup, which is over by now. This I can tell you for sure. So uh, it's, it has already gone into history and it has, let me add to that, that it has gone into history as the probably the shortest coup e, e, which can be written in a Guinness book and also the, the funniest coup uh, since, uh, with all the dramatism of the situation, since there were no any clashes, there were no any casualties, uh, not a single person was killed or even wounded, and not a single shot fired. So mm -hmm. all that remained for us a, as some, some enigmatic uh, event which luckily faded away uh, as a cloud and we'll see we've seen silver line into clouds and we hope that uh we will pass we, we have already passed this crash test and passed quite successfully well the wagner group is credited with some of the biggest gains for russia in ukraine and in this entire conflict uh, even with the donbass offensive and what's happened in donetsk with uh, and they had an active role to play what went wrong? What triggered the that's, mutiny? That, that, that's a $1 million question uh, everybody's struggling to understand. I can just uh, try to give you my, my, my perception, how, how, how I see it. Uh, but let me give you a bit of a background. Who is Yevgeny Prigozhin? You see, because one, one day people were asking, who is Mr. Putin? Now everybody is asking, who is Mr. Prigozhin? Uh, Mr. Prigozhin used to be one of the close friends of, of President Putin, and he was even nicknamed Cook of President Putin. Though in his interviews, he more than once said that he knows nothing about cooking. And the origin of, of this uh, nickname, Cook, comes from, from the fact that he is the owner of several restaurants where allegedly President Putin in the old days used to dine. dine. But uh, despite of this restaurant business, he emerged as, as, as the head of quite successful private military company, Wagner, which was doing quite important job in, in, in hotspots of Africa before coming to Ukraine. When we talk about Ukrainian uh, crisis and the standoff at the battleground, um, it's an open secret that uh, Wagner boys were doing great job and they were very effective and instrumental in the early months of, of the standoff with Ukraine. Uh, specifically, uh, largely to their credit, we were able to uh, get control of strategically located city of Bakhmut. Sometimes mm -hmm. it is called Artyomovsk. That, that's, that's an important milestone of the whole Ukrainian campaign, and it should be credited uh, mostly to Wagner boy, boys. Then what, uh, what went wrong? Uh, I think it's a, it's a mix or combination of factors. Uh, first, of course, uh, the, most, the, most, the most important thing uh, with the whole story is probably overblown ambitions of uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin. Uh, you know, mm. uh, in a situation when, when you uh, find yourself uh, a hero of Russia who, who is crushing uh, Ukrainian forces, uh, you at one point may feel that probably um, you are not occupying that important position that you deserve. Mm. Uh, second thing is that uh, in his interviews before this, this coup, and this should be also... Uh, mentioned 
he he gave several interviews in which he he attacked. We've seen many jabs, open jabs of, on Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu, criticizing mm. him for what Prigozhin believed to be uh, ineffective, you know, uh, leadership. He was also saying that Wagner Group was not supplied uh, by uh, by ammunition and shells the way it needed. So it's it's quite difficult to say what went wrong with his relations with defense ministry, but he was uh, outspoken, you know, and he didn't scare to criticize uh, defense ministry. And he, before this, so to say, coup, I, I call it bizarre coup, he uh, gave several interviews which were widely discussed here, lashing out <clears throat> at top military commanders which was very unpleasant surprise to all of us, which raised eyebrows. So everybody was asking why President Putin, who is commander in chief, is not stepping in. But anyway, uh, this is the reality. So uh, on one hand, uh, we were surprised that he openly challenged uh, uh, Russian uh, uh, military uh, in this uh, attempt to get control of this strategically located city of uh, Rostov, but at the same time, if we look at the situation in a broader context of his previous statements, we have to come to a conclusion that the situation was evolving this way, because we've mm. seen the conflict which, 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 which was growing up, and there was no resolution for this conflict, so one day it should have come to a climax, and uh, this weekend we've seen that climax. But uh, what happens next? Does President Putin uh, now come away weaker? Because a large, large section of the Western media says that Pre uh, President Putin has lost solid ground. There are other reports which believe, no, he'll only come stronger because he will now be able to galvanize the support of the people of Russia. How do you analyze the situation? Uh, I'm not subscribed to, to the to theory that uh, it has weakened President Putin. On the contrary, I think that it has reinforced the position of President Putin. And let me just explain you why. You know, there's a good Russian saying, what is not killing you makes you stronger. So this, so to say, coup didn't kill us. And President uh, was wise to enough to, in appropriate moment, a crucial moment to address the nation, to make a strong worded statement uh, condemning actually the action of Yevgeny Prigozhin, who used to be his old friend. He called it treason. He called it a stab in the back uh, of Russia. Uh, and by making this appeal, actually, he sent a strong signal not only to Yevgeny Prigozhin, not only to Wagner group boys, but also to the whole society, uh, making itself clear that everybody, including Army people, including uh, private Evgeny Prigozhin's private army, uh, 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 including regular Russians, that everybody has to, to make a choice. Either he supports uh, President Putin or he supports Evgeny Prigozhin, who tried to pose himself as to, uh, well, let me say, Robin Good of the 21st century. I'm saying Robin Hood because his army, uh, private army, is composed of criminals. But uh, mm -hmm. he, he lives in his own, you know, world of fairy, fairy tale that he has some good criminals who are fighting for justice. In fact, all his uh, statements were overloaded with that rhetoric that we have to clean Russia from, from all, all bad things. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we have to, to, to defend our Russia, Mother Russia. We have to bring justice to, to Mother Russia. We have to bring justice to front, like, uh, like that, you see? Uh, so uh, by doing that, of course, he severely handicapped, you know, all efforts of Evgeny Prigozhin because everybody understood that the vast majority of the society, and uh, uh, not, to say, not, not to talk about the army and security forces, but even Wagner Group, of course, if they see such a statement of President Putin, of course, they would support not, not their head, Evgeny Prigozhin, they will support president. So, mm. uh, as I understand, you see, after just making calculation of the whole situation, Evgeny Prigozhin realized that uh, all his, you know, loudmouth rhetoric that he will come with his boys to Moscow, 
is doomed to fail and he has two options, either to find an exit strategy out of the whole mess or to be arrested and killed. Luckily, President of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, stepped in and posed as a mediator between the groups. And uh, he suggested uh, that Evgeny Prigozhin would move from Russia to, to Minsk, to Belarus. Mm. Uh, this idea was supported by Vladimir Putin, who uh, gave his guarantee that there, was no any, there would be no any persecution of uh, Evgeny Prigozhin, who was initial, initially, you know, believed to, to, to commit an mm. act of truth. So uh, th this is not the case anymore. He would be allowed freely to go to Belarus. Probably he's already there. I don't know his mm. whereabouts. But, 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 but anyway, uh, you see, we avoided the, that clashes. And uh, as far as Wagner Group is concerned, uh, in practical terms, uh, they have already got the proposal from Defense Ministry to sign a contract with them, you know, and to, to be part mm. of Russia's regular army. So I think, I personally think that most of the Wagner group would join uh, Russia's regular army. Uh, those diehards who supported mm. Prigozhin or, or who may not agree to the idea of, of surrender probably they will be persecuted, but but anyway, you see, we we have passed this crash test successfully. That's a bad news for Ukraine, obviously, bad news for for the West, which wanted uh, mother or Russia mm. to collapse, uh, which wanted uh, to to see some civil war, and and probably you've seen some interviews by Russian mm. experts uh, appearing on Western media channels about talking about uh, civil war. So I am telling you that there's no any any civil war here. There's no any clashes. Wagner Group is deploy is already moving out of Rostov. I think already left Rostov, and other cities moving to its camp. It's all over. What happens next? Does this uh, force a recalibration of Russia's Ukraine strategy? And will uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin now is he now a pariah, or will he continue to work closely with President Putin and the Russian government? Well, I don't think uh, that uh, he can stage a quick comeback to, to Russia. Uh, well, keeping in mind what he has already done, uh, I think that uh, the, the idea to keep him in Belarus, which is de facto more than a friendly country, we, we, we have a union state with Belarus, to keep mm. him in Belarus, uh, that is a sort of a, a good uh, decision. Yeah, to, I can't call it exile it's, as such, you know, because potentially mm. he can stay in Belarus, he, he can do business. You see, uh, he is not a criminal. He still, uh, he, he still remains a figure, but uh, I don't think that uh, Russia's authorities would take a second risk to, to bring him back to, to the battleground here. Because right. you see what, what Evgeny Prigozhin done, uh, has done, or tried to do, was very dangerous. Can you imagine that with all his, the credit to Wagner boys, uh, can you imagine any country, let's put Russia aside, India or whatever, United States of America, where private company, private military company would try to impose its will on uh, defense ministry, on prime minister, on president, this is really crazy. It's mm. it's not a branch of, of a power. So this is abnormal situation. Such things should never happen. And a lot depends on a personality. If you have a personality like uh, like Prigozhin, well, I'm not a psychiatrist. I don't know what happened to him. Probably, you see, I can assume that there were some enormous psychological uh, pressure which he was not able to resist, probably there was not mm. any psychiatrist. But I was watching carefully his interviews, which were, were given, say, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And you can find that also one of the interviews, he is not just uh, given interview, but he is running over the field, which is covered by the, the dead bodies of Wagner boys, soaked with blood, and he's shouting, oh, Shaigu. Look at these bodies. They are dismembered. Look at their mothers. Think of their, their children. You killed them. You see? 
So uh, when you see this, when you day to day, when you see death, when you see decomposed bodies of, of your associates, at one point you you may get mad or half mad, and probably hmm. this is what happened to Prigozhin. But what happens to the Russia camp, uh, the Ukraine campaign now for Russia? Is there going to be a recalibration? My final question: How do you see things evolving? I don't think that we can expect some major recalibration of of Russia's campaign. Uh, what, what should be done now, of course, uh, uh, obviously groundwork, groundwork to incorporate this Wagner army into Russia's regular army. Uh, second point is that um, uh, we are doing quite well in, uh, you know, withstanding the pressure of Ukraine and combined NATO, because when you say Ukraine, everybody understands that it is Ukraine plus, 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 and many plus. So we are able to withstand that you, the pressure of, of Ukraine plus, plus, plus. We've already burned more than uh, 200 tanks, including famous Leopards, and uh, already the, the soldier who burned the first Leopard got a, quite a good price of, if I'm not mistaken, around 1 million ruble, which is quite a big money. Uh, mm. So we are going to ban more tanks, uh, whether they are coming from Germany or Britain or America. But, uh, of course, the key question is that uh, this is not enough. Uh, at one point, we will have not just to, to be involved in counteroffensive, but to start our own offensive. Uh, I don't think that the time is ripe enough for that. But, and I'm not a military expert, but uh, uh, judging by what, what I hear from, from my colleagues, uh, military experts, officers, that at one point, no one knows when it comes, we will have to start offensive because we mm. have to finish this, uh, this conflict. Everybody needs peace. Uh, the countries of global south are calling for peace. Uh, Prime Minister Modi said that that was not a solution in this world, but we are not allowed to make peace because the West has said, has hinted that they want a, a P Ukrainian peace only through overthrowing of President Putin, overthrow Russia's defeat. As you know, in diplomacy, uh, this is a non-starter. We can't agree to mm. that. That's why mm. we have no option but to fight. To fight till to to till it our victory. So you, uh, both sides want to defeat the other, and that's not a point to start for diplomacy. Because Prime Minister Narendra Modi also said that no nation's sovereignty should be challenged. So you've got to respect the sovereignty of all nations. So everybody can interpret that statement however they want. But Mr. Stoken, wonderful speaking with you, and I look forward to connecting with you again in the days to come as the situation evolves. Thank you very much.